Welcome to the Eye of the Storm at the Museum of Discovery and Science in Fort Lauderdale, sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management. I'm meteorologist Eric Solna with the International Hurricane Research Center at Florida International University. And in this video, you're gonna learn about hurricane science and flying into the eye of the storm with the NOAA Hurricane Hunters. My name is Shirley Murillo, and I am the Deputy Director of the Hurricane Research Division that is part of the Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory located in Miami, Florida. So the Hurricane Research Division essentially studies hurricanes, and our studies help to improve the forecasts uh, that, that are given by the National Hurricane Center. Hurricanes usually form off the coast of Africa, uh, so essentially it's a small thunderstorm and you have several things that kind of help a hurricane form. You need warm ocean uh, sea surface temperatures, you need the right amount of, of wind shear, so essentially sort of the, the, the wind cannot be too strong or too low in several parts of the atmosphere, and then you need a sort of a cluster of, of thunderstorms to kind of get together, and as soon as those things all these things, it's almost like the stars align, and when those stars align, then you start the formation of hurricanes. So here's one of our models of our, of our aircraft. We have two of these uh, that are part of NOAA, and these are sort of our, our, our workhorse. It's like a science flying laboratory inside the hurricane. And the reason we fly is that uh, there's no other instrument that can collect uh, data from inside the storm. Yes, we have satellites that are like, sort of like the big picture outside and, and lets us know what's happening on the, on the outside of a storm, but there's nothing like flying into the storm and collecting data from inside. And we fly all throughout the storm. We fly right in the thick of it and we cover all the quadrants of the storm. So we have several flight patterns that we fly. And so whether I say this is how we do the science, sometimes the pilots say, well, surely that's a little bit too dangerous. Let's rework our flight pattern. And so sometimes we discuss that on the fly, pun intended, on how we kind of change the way that we're doing our, our operations. But effectively, essentially what we do is that we're trying to collect the most data that we can during our flight as safely as possible. So in the recent years, we started working with drones. So these are unmanned aerial systems that fly in areas where it's unsafe for us to fly with these larger aircraft. The drones help us to understand the atmosphere in the lower part of the atmosphere, almost like where you and I live, but down in the ocean surface. So we're able to launch the drones from this aircraft and what those measurements give us have really unraveled uh, the technology and the scientific uh, understanding of hurricanes. This is a drop wind sound, a GPS drop wind sound. We drop these from the belly of the aircraft and we drop about uh, 15 to 20 of these on, on any given mission. And so there's a parachute that is launched from the belly of the aircraft and this falls into the ocean and we're getting temperature, pressure, relative humidity, GPS, which tells you latitude and longitude, um, and wind speed and wind direction every half second. So for every second we get two measurements. And so it's essentially painting a picture of the entire column of a hurricane. We launch these throughout the storm and it's able to, to give us even more information of, of what's happening inside the storm. Wow, how amazing was that Hurricane Hunters experience? I'm Joe Cox, President and CEO of the Museum of Discovery and Science here in downtown Fort Lauderdale. We're in our brand new maker space here at the museum where in today's brainstorm, you're actually gonna learn lots more about aerodynamics and aviation. So we just learned that the Hurricane Hunters use drones and drop sons to collect data. Meanwhile, the Hurricane Hunters aircraft experiences a tremendous amount of turbulence while flying through a storm, including updrafts and downdrafts. We're here at the museum's wind tunnel where we're gonna show you what an updraft would look like using some homemade items. I see Lan is sending up a water cup here. Lan, let me ask you a question. Would you ever wanna be a Hurricane Hunter? Yes, I would love to. I'm gonna try to fly over the 
eye of the storm. So you'd love to fly over the calmest part of the storm. Yes, <laughs> okay. not the scariest part. I don't want to, you know? <laughs> I understand. So Shirley, what's it like to fly into a hurricane? Oh, it's really exciting, I tell you. It does get bumpy sometimes. So I would imagine if you close your eyes and you think you're on a, a roller coaster, it's similar to that. What's interesting is that I have instrumentation that tells me when I might feel those bumps. So I sort of prepare myself, you know, mentally and physically when we're going to feel those bumps. So I mentioned that we have the P3, we have two of these that uh, get to fly inside the storm. And over here I've got a model of the uh, Gulfstream G4 jet. Let me show it to you here. This is what it looks like. It's essentially a, a Lear jet. It's like a little private jet. But in the inside it's been outfitted with computers and, and, and monitors for us and instrumentation that we're able to collect the data. So this aircraft flies in the environment of the storm. It's sort of like uh, sort of looking out of what kind of environment a particular storm is going to experience and the data goes into the computer models. This aircraft also flies high in the atmosphere, sometimes over the storm to look at several features in the upper atmosphere. So sometimes we're flying both of these aircrafts uh, in tandem and it, getting the data from both of these aircrafts gives us an, an amazing picture, sort of like a 3D picture of how the hurricane is evolving and growing. It was so cool learning about the different types of aircraft that the hurricane hunters fly through and over a storm. Now we're gonna build our own paper airplanes and put them to the test. Lan, you're kind of an expert at this. Yes, yes I am. But if I wanted to go into a career involving building airplanes, what kind of career would I go into? Aeronautical engineering. That's fantastic. Yes. So could you give us a couple of cool, you know, secrets of the trade For me, here? My secrets are I make sure I have nice crisp lines as I fold them. My planes are gliders and they glide high to low. So you can you can create different kinds yes. of airplanes. Yes, you can, yes you can. So I'm gonna follow this one. Yeah, I'm gonna follow this one. This is a glider. And okay, so you can have a glider, you can have planes that make loops. Yes, you can have they a They fly in circles. You have a jet plane. I mean, we all know you're an expert, Land, but you know, I'm 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 kind of feeling I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of this right now. That, and I'm gonna win that, this. Is that a bit of a competition out here? It, it kind of is. I'm a little competitive. Oh, yeah, choice. I definitely won. No, it was me. It was me. Okay, we all know I won. Jinx. But today, we learned that the Hurricane Hunters really centers around the science of meteorology. Shirley, could you tell us what a meteorologist does? A meteorologist studies the weather. And not only does it study the weather in, in our Earth, people who are meteorologists can also study the weather in other planets, too. And even weather that happened in the past looking at like the, the weather that was maybe a hundred years ago. So meteorologists provide you the weather and also improve forecasts. I became a meteorologist because I have a passion for discovery. For me, it was Hurricane Andrew back in 1992 that impacted my hometown of Miami, Florida. And at that time, I, I really took to heart of how my community was devastated and I wanted to be an agent of change and help my community thrive and improve those forecasts. So the classes that I took to become a meteorologist were heavy on math and science, physics, but also I had to take classes like English and public speaking to be able to communicate the science that I'm discovering day by day. So my words of encouragement is to always uh, strive and, and continue to, uh, to take those classes. There are, there's help everywhere. I, I wasn't an A student, I was about an average math student. But because I, you know, I, I found the math and, and the science a little bit challenging, almost like a Rubik's Cube, it made me want to pursue it more. I would consider maybe a, doing a science experiment at home and, and partnering with, with a researcher to ask questions. Every time I get on a Hurricane Hunter flight, 
it's always something new that we're going to learn about hurricanes. And so each and every flight, each and every data set and piece of data that we collect helps us understand the bigger picture. It's almost like building a giant puzzle of how the hurricane interacts, how it forms, how it grows, how it weakens. And so I enjoy the fact of learning this discovery and, and making new inroads in, in tropical meteorology. In Eye of the Storm today, we got to meet some of the amazing hurricane hunters and our friends at NOAA really took us inside a hurricane to see what it's like to be in that amazing, dynamic, exciting space. Eye of the Storm is a wonderful collaboration between Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center and it's sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management would encourage you to stay in touch with the museum on all of our social media platforms so that we can prepare you for Eye of the Storm each and every time.